Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY, where I like to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I have three farmhouse home decor using items found at Dollar Tree, and I tried to use items that are easy to find, not seasonal items. This video is part of a challenge called What Would You Do? And I'll explain more in just a second. Here we go. So for this challenge, an aisle from Dollar Tree was randomly chosen and we had to choose something from that aisle to create a DIY for. So the first DIY I'm making, I had to use an item from the kitchen aisle. So this first DIY, I'm going to use six of these ch metal choppers, a mop handle, some nautical rope, some magnets, some of these rectangular wood slats, and some poster letters. So this is the item I chose from the kitchen aisle to create a DIY around. I do like that these are metal and they are magnetic then, or magnets are attracted to them. And I decided to make kind of a banner. So what I did is I taped off the top part of the metal rectangle and just to take away a lot of the shine and be able to make this DIY fit into the farmhouse decor, I did take my white chalk paint and dry brushed on the metal. Now, I wanted to also make this changeable. So what I'm doing here is I'm measuring the width of the chopper and then I'm going to trim these wood rectangles so that they will fit on top of the chopper. Here you see the seven inch wood slat. I'm going to cut two inches off to make them five inches long instead of seven. So I'm actually going to do this to two packages of these wood rectangles, so 12 total. If you just wanna make this say one thing, then you could just do six of the rectangles. But like I said, and you'll see towards the end here, this is going to be a changeable um, DIY. So once I've cut all those pieces off, I am just using my sanding sponge just to uh, get any of the splintered edges off. And then coming back to our metal choppers, we'll go ahead and remove that tape. We have a nice crisp line there, but I don't want that chalk paint to scratch off. So I am going to give each of my choppers, just the front side where the paint is, a coat of matte finish Mod Podge and then let that dry. While those are drying with my wood pieces here, I'm going to wipe on some antique wax and then rub it off. I am doing the front and all the edges, but not the back. And I always just love wiping that excess off and seeing the beautiful wood grain. So I have, like I said, 12 of these. With six of them, I'm going to use my poster sticker letters to write family. And then on the other side, we're going to do home with the four middle ones and then do like a little leaf sticker on the two ends. You'll see that here in just a second. Of course, you could use as many of these choppers as you want. I found that six fit really well on the mop handle, but you could make your words say whatever you want. You could make it say your family's last name, um, just modify it. And I did go over those stickers with Mod Podge. Now, using these little magnetic buttons from the Crafter Square, I am going to glue two of them to the back of each of my wood slats here. So I needed a total of 24 magnets for this, which would be two packages. And here you can see my set that says family, and I already have that magnetized onto 
the metal choppers. Now, I did take some nautical rope, but I unwound one of the three strands just so it was a little bit thinner. And I'm going to wrap about three times around on each of the ends of my mop handle. And then we're going to go around about two times between each of the choppers just so they don't slide around and they stay an equal distance apart. So there, 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 and there, I'm going to wrap another little piece of the nautical rope around. And here you can see I've glued it and I'm letting each of those dry. And then I'll go ahead here and show you how I'm just gonna wrap it around two times and then hot glue the end there. And then once it's dry, trim it. Now I made sure I have my mop handle turned and all of these ends will be on one side and then I will turn those to the back. And here's how it turned out. I'm thinking you could just hang a couple nails or even those hooks from Dollar Tree. But here I want you to see how you can store the other set of wood rectangles on the back because they have magnets. They can just hide on the back side of the choppers. And if you want to change it out what you say, you can just switch those out. I thought this was so fun and a creative way to use items that you can find pretty much all the time, I believe at most Dollar Trees. So I hope you really like how this turned out. What would you make the letters say if you made this project? I'd love to know in the comments. For project number two, the aisle that was randomly selected was glassware. Now, my Dollar Tree keeps the glass salt and pepper shakers in the glassware aisle, so that's what I chose to use for this DIY. I'm also using a pie plate and a cake pan from the kitchen section, some Mod Podge, and some chalk paint. I'm gonna make a small two-tiered tray here. I've always wanted to make one and I thought the salt and pepper shakers would be really fun to use as the levels. Now, doing chalk paint on metal, I wanted to go ahead and just give a coat of Mod Podge first to make sure that the paint was going to stick pretty well to the metal pan, so I did one or two coats of Mod Podge and then let that dry. Now I'm going to use three of these four salt and pepper shakers. I will end up using all four of the lids, you'll see in a moment. But I wanted to also try something else that I've never done before and that was decoupaging with napkins from Dollar Tree. So I have some of these really cute spring napkins and after giving a couple coats of Mod Podge, I'm gonna go ahead and set this down on just the outside layer of the napkin. So you are going to want to peel the two um, sections apart and then just gently rub this down as I'm kind of stretching it across the salt shaker. Then go ahead and do another layer of Mod Podge on top and then let that dry completely. Then once that was dry, I'm just going down with my scissors and kind of snipping each of the corners so that we can kind of like you're wrapping a present, go ahead and wrap each of those ends down. You'll, you won't actually see the bottom of the salt shaker, but we wanna go ahead and get the napkin as um, smoothly down as possible. Now that our Mod Podge has dried on our two pans, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple coats of my Waverly chalk paint in white. I did the bottoms, let that dry, flip it around, do the inside, back to the back, and then back to the inside. Now once our salt shakers are completely dry, I'm taking some Fix-All adhesive from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to glue two of these together, um, open end to open end, and just let those sit for a while until they're completely dried and sealed by that glue. Now, once our paint is all dry on our pans, I am going to take my sanding sponge or you could take a hand sander and just kind of expose a little bit of the metal just to make it look a little more worn. 
With my third salt shaker, I am going to put some hot glue inside and then add this bead. Um, this is just gonna be my decorative top for my tiered tray. I am going to cover up the rest of the glass there where the threads are for the lid with some of my jute twine, just wrapping it around and securing it every once in a while with some hot glue. And here's how it looks when it's all dry. So then using some of the Fix-All Adhesive and hot glue combination, we're going to glue this to the center of the cake pan, which is the top tier of our tray. And now that our two shakers that we glued together are dry, we're going to do the same thing with our jute twine and wrap it around just to cover that space between the two decoupaged sections of our salt shakers. Now here's the very bottom of our tray. This is the pie pan. And here you can see I'm using all four of the shaker lids. I'm putting Fix-All adhesive in the center and then a circle of hot glue. I'm just using this napkin to help me see where um, each of these should go to be evenly spaced. So these four lids are going to be the feet of our tiered tray. Now I'm ready to glue the two shakers that are together to the bottom tray. And then the last step will be to put the top tray on top here. And here's what it looks like with our two trays and our three shakers. I just think this is so cute and simple. Hopefully it gives you some good ideas of how you can think outside the box to use items that you can find all the time at Dollar Tree. This is just mine decorated with a few spring items. Now our third DIY, I thought this was gonna be my most challenging and I wasn't going to like it, automotive and pet aisle. Okay, I had the hardest time trying to find something, but I ended up going with this oil pan, I think it's called, a placemat, some of the white nautical cotton rope, and some garland that I had from Hobby Lobby. So I thought because this pan was round and it has a little place to hang, I thought I might try to make a wreath of some sort out of it. Now, I know a lot of people have done placemats on pizza pans, but I dare say I'm the first to put a placemat on an oil pan and call it a wreath. So here we go. I trimmed around it as best I could to make it fit the circle there on the bottom of our oil pan and just gave little trims as I saw needed. And then we're just going to hot glue this to the bottom of our pan. But first, I wanted to cover up all this black shininess. So got out my trusty Waverly chalk paint in white, and I just gave the entire thing all around the sides and in that little, um, I don't know, thing around the side, what do you call it? The little thing at the bottom, oh my gosh, like a moat or something, and then around the little edges there. So just to give it um, less of that shiny and more of a farmhouse look. To be honest, I was coming up with this as I was going, so you guys are watching me create pretty much as I did it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and glue that placemat down to the center of the bottom. I wanted to use some of this nautical rope that was white because I felt like it went really well with the colors of the placemat. So I'm starting kind of on the, the rounded hump of the bottom of the pan here. I'm gonna use that as my guide and do my first circle of rope right on that. And then I am gonna do another time around inside between this rope and the placemat just to cover up that edge where I cut around the placemat. And here's what that looks like with the two pieces of the rope. Now, like I said, I was creating as I was going here. So I wasn't sure what was gonna go on the sides of this pan, but I decided I wanted to put some Mod Podge just so the paint wasn't going to flake off. 
Then I decided to use more of the rope and I believe I went around about three more times around the, maybe four, around the entire, um, I'm just gonna call it a bucket now, around the entire bucket. So I did use about three packs of that nautical rope, but then um, just took some greenery. Now you could take individual pieces of greenery and glue them around in a circle. I had uh, a portion of a garland from Hobby Lobby that I got on clearance. But again, you could use any florals you want for this. And I'm just uh, gluing a little bit of the main stem that's holding everything together in one of the little spaces between two rows of the rope. And I really was very happy with how this turned out. I was ecstatic that my garland went almost all the way around. I started it at the bottom so that now when I make a bow, it'll cover any little gap of the garland. Now this is the very simplest way to make a bow. You're going to take some burlap ribbon and you can see I've folded it over and it's flat. It won't stay flat, but I am gluing the two ends and I'm gonna lay that down. And now I'm going to make another one just a little bit smaller. All right, you can see how I did that. Then you just pinch them together and tie them with some jute twine in a knot so that it holds them together right there in the center. Then go ahead and trim any excess ribbon and the excess twine. Now for the center of your bow, just take another small piece and fold it in thirds and glue that together. And then you're going to just wrap that around the center. It basically is covering up the jute twine and then hold it in place there until it is dry. And now your bow can be added to your wreath or whatever you're adding it to. I did want this bow though to have some, I don't know, we'll call them legs. So I made two sets of legs and kind of curled the ribbon a little bit and then did a little dovetail on the bottom of each piece of the burlap ribbon. And then once those are cut, just go ahead and hot glue your bow right there to the center. This is the easiest way to make a bow. Then I just added a little bit of this Dollar Tree ribbon. I thought it matched the colors really nicely. And I was amazed and so thrilled with how this turned out using an oil drip pan from the automotive section of Dollar Tree. So I hope this video has inspired you to look at your everyday Dollar Tree items in a new ways, how you can use them to create beautiful home decor to match your style and your colors. Please let me know in the comments which of these you liked the best, and maybe if you'd be interested in giving me a challenge from Dollar Tree. Is there an item at your Dollar Tree that you see all the time that you wanna challenge me to create a DIY with? Let me know in the comments. See ya, bye.